Let's think of elections which are normally contestations in the context of a horse race. Only then would you appreciate the analogy of the dark horse. Don't take it literally, but figuratively. A dark horse lingers in the shadows, not expected to succeed in a contest, but springs a surprise to win unexpectedly. The first round of the 2023 general elections produced several dark horses who rode on the bandwagon effect of a third force to win elections for which they were written off as underdogs. Neda Imaswen is one of such dark horses. He was senior legislative aide to a serving senator and both contested the Edo South senatorial election on different platforms. Today, he's senator-elect, having defeated his former boss. Politics is a game of intrigues. And if it does not pro pro produce an upset, then it's not politicking. If people that lack financial muscles, ordinarily that we will write them off are dislodging heavyweights, it's a good omen for democracy and it's good for the country. In another instance, 47-year-old Donatus Matthew, father of four and graduate of philosophy, is now member-elect for Kaura Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. He was popular as a commercial motorcycle operator who even used his bike to campaign for votes. He emerged as a dark horse who will now legislate in the 10th National Assembly. 2023 election is, is a watershed in the Nigerian political landscape in the sense that today we have the Obedient Movement, the Kwankwasiya Movement. They are not only in terms of um, being a movement per se, but now they are moving into the realm of participating actively, taking, grabbing power. In Lagos, very few persons knew the opponents of celebrity artist Olubankole Wellington, a.k.a. Banki W, for a Chiosa federal constituency seat in the House of Representatives. Thaddeus Atta, the dark horse of the Labour Party, only became known when he floored Banki W of the PDP and Babajide Obanikoro of the APC at the polls. That's why it's called People's Parliament. It's, it's, the, it's the parliament, is the assembly of people. And uh, unlike in the past where this assembly was dominated by one ruling party or the other, now you have to uh, negotiate, you have to navigate, you have to consult, you have to lobby other parties. Another major upset happened in the nation's seat of power. No one imagined that Ireti King Gibe, who is not an original inhabitant of the FCT, would beat three-time Senator Philip Aduda hands down in his own political stronghold. You can never reign forever. Not even a king reigns for life. You know, you, there will always be time and season. And so their own time and season, for those who lose out, their time and season has stopped. And they can retry, you know, in 2027. In Enugu, 40-year-old Chimobi Sam Atu, known as a bus driver and member of a vigilante group, also pulled a major upset when he defeated long-standing politicians to win the Enugu North and South constituency election on 25th of February on the platform of the Labour Party. People should not be taken for granted because there will be payback and there will be consequences. And it goes to all our leaders that the sufferings of the Nigerian masses, they are all not um, oblivious of what is happening and there will be a time for consequences and payback. And election time is one of those times. The battlegrounds shift to the states for the governorship and state houses of assembly elections this Saturday. Will there be more dark horses? That is one question with possible answers in a matter of days. Mitaire Ikben. NTA News.